Pastor Mark, I feel like I'm talking in the third person. It just seems really weird some days. Uh, Mark and I were talking the other day, and we're, we're like, well, maybe we need to start going by Woody and Scott. You know, just something to help stop the confusion for so many. Uh, <laughs> but that would probably take some of the fun right out of it, wouldn't it? Thank you so much for being with us today, whether you're here in body or, or joining us on, on video. Um, we thank you. I know this is such a weird time. We as Pentecostals like to shake, hug. You know, we're, we're kind of that kind of people. So this is, this is hard on us to not be able to do shaking and hugging. But you know what? God is good. God's going to get us through this. Amen? Amen. And I believe that God is still moving this morning. I, I really feel good about what God is doing for us as a nation, but even more so as a people of God. You know, I, I was talking to yesterday to Diana, sorry, Dr. Spout. Uh, actually, I, I think I'm the only person that she requires to call her doctor, but uh, uh, I tease her because every time we have a disagreement on something, she looks at herself and says, doctor, and I'm the guy that's supposed to, you know, I guess bow to that. But anyway, um, we, were, we were joking, we were in town, and somebody says, aren't you nervous? And she goes, no. She says, this is safer than where I work. So, and I've thought a lot about the health professionals and those who are working in, in all the different areas. You know, we do need to keep them in prayer because this is a serious time. And, uh, you know, I love the memes that have gone out because we've got to have a sense of humor, but we need to take precautions as well. And so, just keep them in prayer. I want to share with you this morning on taking a stand. Um, it's kind of funny that this, this God started dealing with this before all the scary stuff started happening. But in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13, it says this. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. And I want to focus on that concept for just a moment. We talk about the armor of God all the time. But we never talk about just stopping and standing where God has placed us to be. We don't think of glory in that, but there's really actually a very strong message about taking a stand and knowing where God has placed you and performing what God has asked you to do in that place and time. Now, why is this such a message to me? Because it's about a story. It's about a life of victory when we're willing to take a stand regardless. Personally, I've had to deal with some hard stuff in my life over the last few months. And there were some people that got upset with me because I wasn't willing to be flexible. Sometimes uh, I, have, I did a post a while back on Facebook about I'm a hard man. And I get told that sometimes because I don't believe in having gray areas in your life. It's either right or it's wrong. There's a victory in that. Believe it or not, there is a victory in that. Because what happens is, is we've watched a nation that was thriving and searching the very heart of God to becoming a nation that in a lot of ways has become complacent. What happened? They let go of the stand. They quit taking the stand that they should have stood for God. Amen. And I believe that we in our own personal lives struggle with that. Some of us struggle with addictions. Now, before you judge anybody with an addiction, I would like to tell every one of you that you have an addiction. You know, I'll, I'll give you one real quick. What happened the moment you were told not to touch your face? <laughs> Let me think. Uh, <laughs> that's exactly what we did, wasn't it? <laughs> what happens is, is that all of us struggle with something in our life. But here's the thing. We struggle with those because often we don't take a stand. If you're dealing with things that I have people that uh, have talked to me about quitting smoking, and they're like, so I'm going to get around to it. That's not taking a stand. That's thinking. I, I'm going to lose weight as soon as I get done with the buffet. You know what I'm saying? We have these things that we've got to take a stand in. And I was teasing Diana the other day because I have gym membership. You guys have heard me talk about this. I have a gym membership. And I went there once to sign up. And it hasn't done me any good. And I can't figure out why. Because I think just having the membership, I should get credit for that, right? Sometimes we live our Christian walk kind of that way. So I want to start here. Are you prepared to stand? We begin to look at this day and age, and there's a lot of confusion, there's a lot of fear. I, I'm, I went to the store as many as you have, and you sit back and you're like, really? What are people thinking? They are they being controlled by rational thought? No. 
Are they being controlled by fear? Yes. We as Christians today need to know that we are not controlled by fear. Amen? Amen. If we have equipped ourselves with the armor of God like it talks about, then we know where we can take a stand. Because we are prepared, we are equipped to stand up and declare that God is still God. That I still have the Holy Spirit moving in my life to prepare me for the things that are to come. I believe that we should get excited in these days and age. Instead of walking around in fear, I, I, I just it boggled my mind that the two things that we started running out of immediately was toilet paper and ammo. Amen. How those two go together, I do not know. But I thought, wait a minute. Wouldn't you buy food first before the toilet paper? So there's some of the stuff that you realize is not rational. It's fear-driven. Now here's the thing. If we're not careful as Christians, we're not preparing to take a stand because we're driven by fear more than rational of what God's telling us to do. God tells me that I have peace in all this stuff. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Notice what it's telling us here. The weaponry that you have that will enable you to take a stand, whether it's breaking addictions or bad things in your life, whether it's dealing with sin, whatever it may be, health, the number one thing you need to recognize is your weaponry does not come from you. But it comes from the Almighty God. This is the same God, if I get my Bible right, that was able to create everything was able to manipulate every molecule, every atom, every cell into what I know of today. Amen? Amen. So if that's true, then is my weaponry that I have hold of right now today weak and infallible? Only if it's coming from me. But if it's coming from God, then I should be the one standing on the mountaintop proclaiming there is a victory Still today in my life. I can take a stand because my God does not fail. My God is still the same God who created everything in the beginning. It's still my God who will take care of everything in the end. So where should fear occupy my mind? It should not. Which brings us to the second part of that scripture. Amen. It says everything that goes through my mind, every imagination. Now I've got to tell you guys, there was a time in my life that I was not a preacher. I know that's hard to believe. There's some people that think I was born from the womb, womb carrying a King James Bible, but that's not true. I had to break certain addictions in my life. I had to overcome obstacles that seemed insurmountable in my life. But here's the thing. As long as I tried to deal with them, guess what? It never got anywhere. But the moment that I recognized that the weaponry that I had was from God, then I began to take and get my mind in line with God, Guess what? Victory was always there. Was the battle easy? No. I'm, you'll never hear me say walking as a Christian is an easy thing to do. But I got a good God, and He helps me every step of the way. But we need to come to that rep, uh, that recognition. I can't even talk. Recognition that what God is trying to establish with us right here is that He is the one that is able to do all things. And if we allow him, he will control the very thoughts of our minds. How many times do we fall into pits and, and side things that gets us in trouble because we allow our own thoughts to occupy more than God's thoughts? And that will cause us to stumble every time. The, and I, anybody that's ever talked to me about dealing with issues in your life, I'll tell you this. The number one thing that will always call you to fall back into old habits, stress. When you sit around afraid of things, stressed out by things, you will always go back to old habits. Amen. Should I give you what the scripture says about that? The Bible puts it in a very gross fashion. Because in reality, sin is gross. Amen? Would you agree with that? The Bible says it says a dog returning to his own vomit. You said it, I didn't. <laughs> but doesn't that sound like a wonderful habit? No. But if we think about it, we don't allow God to get a hold of our minds, then we're not really preparing to stand. 
So it goes on down, and it says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, because Paul understood his limitations. Paul knew where he had weaknesses. This was the guy that said, the things that I would do, I do not, and the things that I would not do, I do. So he comes to here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, and he says this to verse 10. He says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of our Lord Jesus Christ, that the life also of Christ might be made manifest in our bodies. What's he saying? Understand that you are fallible. And if you're fallible, how much more of God do I need in my life? We are living in a day and age that we as saints of God need to have prayer as a number one ingredient in everything that you do. We need to be the crazy people driving in our cars talking to God and people going, don't look at them, they're talking to themselves. <laughs> don't worry about that. Talk to God. I am fanatical enough to believe that, you guys have heard me say this, but I'm fanatical enough to believe that you can talk to God about the trees, the flowers, you can tell God jokes, if you can't tell God the joke, you shouldn't be telling anybody else the joke. Amen? <laughs> On down the line. I believe that one of the struggles that we have is that we don't incorporate God into everything that we do. When I'm cooking, I love to cook. So some of you that like to cook will know this problem. You get in the middle of something, you realize you're missing one ingredient. What do you do? What I do is I go, okay, God... So I don't have this. What, what would be a good alternative? God, how can I alter? I start talking to God. You know what? God's a better cook than I am. What I've discovered is that God really does want to be actively involved in everything that we do. If you're a mechanic, God wants to be involved. If you're a hunter, God wants to be involved. I, got, I, I may have shared this. When I was on the coast pastoring, I uh, kept getting a phone call from one of the, uh, the skippers. Mark, you got to go fishing. Mark, you got to go fishing. Mark, you got to go fishing. So finally one day I said, okay, Dave, I'll show up. And so I go down and I get on his boat. And I kid you not, he goes, so everybody, I just got to tell you, the fishing has been terrible. We have not been doing very good at all. But I got the pastor, the community pastor down here today, and we know that he has devotions every morning. And so today we're going to let it out because he prays. Now, do you think I felt any pressure at that moment? <laughs> By the grace of God, we actually did. We went out and they limited out. And everybody was like, How, where did you go? Hey, we had the pastor on board. Every time the fishing season started getting slow, pastor, you've got to go fishing with us. Pastor, you've got to go fishing with us. And I didn't like to go out in the ocean because I get seasick a lot. But I did go on a few trips. But that was the thing. Every time they started going slow. When they would go out for crab trips, when the season would start off and the weather was rough, I'd get phone calls, Pastor, can you come down and pray for us as we go out? You see, what I'm trying to get across to you is if you, as a man and woman of God, will begin to include God into everything that you do, people will take recognition of that, and you will be the one that they call saying, now you are our hope. We need you today. Are you willing and ready to take a stand in that life in your community? In that of your, of your neighborhood? Are you the one that somebody calls when things are going south for them? That's what we need as Christians. Because we can get past our addictions. We can get past our stumbling blocks. We can get past these things. Because God has now become involved in every little aspect of my life. That's what he's asking for. He brings us all the way down to this when he follows it up with this. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Well, we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. When God becomes active in every portion of my life, and I can bring down those things that are, break, uh, that are holding me back by chains and bondage, I begin to break forth and realize that the things that seem to trouble me are not really the problem. Amen? It deals with the stuff in this world. 
I have watched God provide for me time after time after time after time. I have seen God fail me never. So when we have times, especially with what the craziness is right now, now's the time for Christians to stand up and say, I have the armor of God. I have prepared for such a time as this. Only because I know the one that has victory in my life. And the one that can have victory in yours. Yes, we're going to go through struggles. Yes, we're going to go through problems. But God is still God. He has never fallen. But God is still the victor of my life. Which brings us to the second thing. When will you take a stand? So many times we talk about saying, okay, yeah, I heard that on Sunday. I'm so excited. Now's the time to do it. And then Monday comes along and we get a flat tire, you know, whatever. And just like the rest of my week just sort of goes, you know why our weeks just sort of go downhill? Because we allow them to. Because I, I have this funny thing. I take the Bible literally. And it says that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means the same God that I got excited about on Sunday is the same God that's with me on Monday. And when Tuesday comes along and when Wednesday seems like the week won't end, God is still God. The only perception, the only thing that changes is my perception. So if I'm willing to take the stand, then I need to recognize that now is the time to take the stand. And I get excited in chapter, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2, it says this. But I have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by the manifestation of truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. What's he saying? He's saying, I'm recognizing that now is the time to stand. So here's the reality. In my own personal life, I have to look at what areas I'm struggling with. What areas am I being dishonest to myself and God about? You know what? The greatest area of Christianity is not here in the church. It's when you're by yourself. That's when the truth of your Christianity really comes to a blaring effect. It's when you're sitting on your computer and there's nobody around. That's when your Christianity is going to stand out. It's when you got the TV on and you're watching stuff. That's when your Christianity is going to stand out. It's when you're talking to those people that, you know, don't go to church with you and you can get away with saying certain things, that's when your Christianity is really going to start standing out. And that's hard, I know. But it's time for us to take and say, today is the day that I will stand as the godly man and woman that he has called me to be. Because now is the time that somebody needs to stand up and proclaim that God's truth is still God's truth. And I can have the victory and I can see revivals begin to sweep the land. Revival started in a time of great crisis because somebody was willing to say now is the time to take a stand. If you go over church history, you will find that never did a revival happen when everything went well. You just don't find it. So are we willing that today would be the day to be honest with ourselves and to be honest with God so that God can work in our hearts and our minds and get us to the place where I can stand before anyone in this church and you know where I stand. Amen? Amen? I hope I'm not scaring anybody. I wrote this note. It says this. Why then does the gospel fail? Not through any defect in itself, nor because of some arbitrary decree on the part of God, but because of the God of this world has blinded the eyes of the hearts by the glamour of the world prosperity and success, or perhaps by the covering film or scale of evil habits. So that the light of dawn stealing over the world is unable to penetrate the dark, darkened life. That's, I love old English, sorry. When, I, when you hear me talk about reading modern literature, that's usually something written in the 1800s. Because I like stuff in the 1600s. I love the way they talk, the way that they describe. What's he saying? He's, what we're really trying to say is understand something. This is the truth. But what's happened? We've allowed the things of this world to sometimes blind us to the full victory and the power of God. There's a line in the, in the New Testament that says, at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And I love that. It's such a powerful statement. And those of you who have ever talked to me much have heard me use that a lot. Because what is it about the Christian mind? When I come to the full realization of who Jesus Christ is for me, 
How does that affect us? If Jesus Christ is the beginning and the end of my life, if he is the salvation of my life, is he, if he is the mediator of my life, if he is the high priest of my life, if he is the one that has anointed me, oh, if he is the one that has directed me, if he is the one that is providing for me, if he is the one that is supplying me, if he is the one that has given me an opportunity to meet the very face of God, how excited should I be as a Christian at the revelation of Jesus Christ? Amen? Amen? I get stirred up at the thought that because somebody cared for me enough to go to the cross, that stirs my heart. When I think about this God that would do something like that, for something so insignificant as I. When he stops and he doesn't call me, as David said, as David was declaring himself to be a worm, yet God refers to me as a child of the Most High God. He calls us these things, but the question comes again, when will we take a stand? Romans chapter 13, verse 11 and 12, it says this, and that, knowing that the time is now high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than we be, when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Now is the time that we as Christians should shine. Somebody sent me a little post the other day. It says, Governor says we can't meet in groups larger than 250. Now is the time for small churches. I thought, that's the right perspective. Don't think of it as a bad thing, but hey, we're empowered today. We live in a time when we need to stand and declare that we have the armor of light. Amen. Let us not take and cringe back, but let us shine forth. Amen? I was looking at some stuff the other day. They were looking for drivers that would be willing to deliver lunches, and they were having a hard time. And I'm thinking, man, this is a great opportunity for every church to get involved. You have seniors that have needs. Let's meet the needs, amen? amen? You got people that need prayer? Let's pray for them. Let's get on the phone. Let's start calling people and say, hey, I'm just, you know, I'm just checking up on you. I want to make sure. Do you have anything? Do you need anything? This is the time for Christians to shine, amen? Amen. Because we have the victory of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And here's something really interesting. I know how to pray. To an almighty God who still supplies today. Would you agree with that? Amen. We have nothing to fear. If I get sick, who cares? Amen. Because I know. Here's, I had somebody send me a message the other day. It says, if I get the coronavirus, don't worry about me. God's either going to heal me or take me home. There's no downside. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Because you know what? I love the day that we're going to go to heaven. I look forward to that. And do I want to be sick? No. But God wants it either way. I believe that. So we can share that kind of hope and stir those around us. Last but not least, I'm trying not to, to go crazy here. I love talking about the Bible. I can tell you what, I can sit for hours and talk about the Bible. I hope you can too. I'm not going to preach that long, I promise. I'll just, everybody's starting to sweat bullets there for a moment. But uh, I want to share one more point with you. But i, I got to tell you, take this time. Some of us are kind of stranded away from our jobs and things. Take this time to begin to seek God's face like never before. Last but not least, are you willing to stand? In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 4, it says, But in all things, approving ourselves as ministers of God, in much patience, and affliction, and necessities, and distress, and stripes, and imprisonments, and tumults, and labors, and watching, and fasting, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unframed, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the left hand and on the right, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet re always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. This is the call of Christianity. Nowhere in Christianity does it say that I will proclaim you 
as uh, the person that owns all the money. I'm not going to give you this. I'm not going to. I don't, can't find that. You know, there's people that preach prosperity ministry. I don't. I can't find it. But I found a great God. He supplies my needs. He meets me where I am. And yes, I've gone through struggles. And yes, I've gone through hardships. And yes, I've gone through these things. But never alone. I've overcome obstacles after obstacle after obstacles. But God will always have greater glory than the obstacle. Amen? Have I overcome sins? Yes, but those are not worthy of the mention before God. Because God redeemed me of those things. Let me tell you something, folks. One of the greatest ways to get victory, quit talking about the sin that you overcame. Start talking about the Redeemer. Come on, amen. Let's focus on the one that brought life into our life. And begin to rejoice and know that God is still God. Because no matter what goes on in my life, God is still God. And I can get excited. And when we're at home, we can be excited. When I get on the computer and begin to search the Bible, I find things that stir my heart and soul. Because I get excited that God is still God. No matter what goes on in this crazy world, God is still God. I read the things about revelations and the things that are to come, but God is still God. God still heals. God still redeems. God still does all the stuff in my life. This morning, I should be the most excited person on the face of the earth because God is still God. And it stirs my heart. It stirs my mind. It stirs my soul because there are those out there that are in panic but yet I have peace and I understand that God is still God. They need to know the hope. Because I'm willing to take a stand regardless of what goes on out there. I'm going to take a stand. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it says, But you are a royal and chosen generation. Let me try that again. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and I love this because he understood Pentecostals, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. What's he say? That because you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, be quiet, don't do a lot of things, don't draw attention. Is that what he says? He says just the opposite. Just the opposite. I'll tell you what. This morning... If you are still struggling with addictions, there's still a God that will help you make a stand this morning. If you're dealing with struggles in your marriage, in your life, whatever's going on, there's still a God that knows how to deal with that. If you're struggling with fear this morning because there's colds and stuff going on and you're afraid of that you may or may not and, and all the worry and all the stuff is affecting you, guess what? There's still a God that can give you peace and that can bring joy in your life. I have seen death face to face more times than I care to mention. And you know what? God was standing there with me every single time. Amen. God is still God. And we are still his people this morning. And we still can proclaim the victory of the most high God today. Do not let the fears of this world dissuade you. Do not let them bring about an uncertainty in your life. But know that today, in this place, we make a stand. That I will stand, no matter what, knowing that my God is still my God. Would you declare that with me? Amen. You guys are awfully excited. So, <laughs> I'll tell you what. God is good. God is great. God is doing some amazing things. And as we look at this church body, can you imagine, and with me just this morning, for just a minute, if you got as excited about what we're talking about as what the scripture's talking about, and it stirred you to that point, and then we took all of that out there, what would have happened in here? Amen? Can you imagine, uh, somebody mentioned this, if every person in the church was so motivated by the power of God, that they begin to minister to those around them in a way that God called them to. Now, understand what I'm saying. Getting on the, on the soapbox sometimes and yelling at somebody probably isn't going to do a whole lot for you. But God has a way that you can connect with everybody. But if every person in this church got one person saved within the next two months, how would it affect the church? 
But I think sometimes we're struggling with fear on how somebody will perceive it. I'm willing to take this to how much you. Let's begin to take and share to those who are afraid that there is a Jesus that still gives us hope. Would you stand with me this morning?